Hi, fantastic teachers. Are you ever frustrated when you notice your students don't look very motivated to be in class, or even they look apathetic, or they even sound asleep in class? Well, that's our topic today, so that you can gain perspective and don't make it personal, and also that you keep on bringing the best to your students. So if you're like most of the teachers who come to me, you do your very best to get your students interested. So what's going on? Well, the thing is, however wonderful, entertaining, varied your lessons can be, however passionate and enthusiastic you may be, I'm afraid nothing guarantees that your students will be interested. Why? Because a lesson can never interest anyone. A lesson never has that power. As a matter of fact, a lesson has no power whatsoever. Let me explain. Here's an example. Maybe you've already noticed it for yourself. You're passionate about a topic, but your best friend or partner isn't. For instance, my best friend loves astronomy, and I immediately start yawning when he tries to tell me about the sun and the planets and so on. I turn inwards and I focus on my thoughts and I dream about other things, but that I think about something completely different. On the other hand, I love linguistics and coaching. I'm passionate about understanding why we use one word instead of another one and what it reveals about ourselves. As for him, he simply couldn't care less. So the topic in and of themselves, be they astronomy, linguistics, coaching, whatever, are not inherently interesting or not interesting. It all depends on the way we look at them, with either interest or disinterest. Do you remember beauty lies in the eye of the beholder? Well, it's exactly the same with interest. Interest comes from the spectator, not the show. Speaking of shows, think about shows that used to rivet people years ago. Nowadays, we're not as interested. Same show, and yet we have changed. So let's go back to the classroom. What's happening to the students? Unlike us, they may not feel interested or they don't show interest for the topics we teach or the way we teach them. Same topic, different degrees of interest because of different ways to look at it. So where is that lack of interest coming from? So first of all, we may wonder if that lack of interest is within their control. Maybe they simply haven't slept enough, which has nothing to do with the content of your lesson, with you, nothing at all. And second, is this lack of interest real or are they pretending? For instance, they could feign disinterest to behave the same way as other students who don't participate, for instance. We know that's the kind of behavior we tend to have in a group. We tend to want to blend to do the same as the others. It's very human to be in Rome and to do as Romans do not to be rejected by the tribe. Again, it has nothing to do with your lesson. And maybe they are preoccupied with something completely different, like a family issue, or maybe they're in love. Once more, your lesson, your topic, yourself, not to blame. And maybe they've decided not to be interested. This is extremely important. Whether it's conscious or not, an emotion is a choice. We choose to feel interested. We choose not 
to feel interested. We decided to increase or to decrease our interest for something or somebody. So the good news is that interest can change. Unfortunately, the bad news is that there's nothing much we can do about it. If we could inject interest in your students to control them, or control them, sorry, with a remote control, and choose the interested channel in their brain, we could make a fortune. That would be so much fun. However, it's impossible to make another human being feel anything. Their feelings are their own creation, their own choice. So what to do? So we can't make somebody feel an emotion. But we can offer our vision and a vision that they may believe or not. How do we do that? Well, we can show our own interest for the topic. Sharing our own enthusiasm for a lesson can possibly intrigue the students and make them approve or believe your reasons for being enthusiastic. So here are a few questions to dive deeper into your own interest so that you can radiate interest when you teach. For instance, why are you so passionate about that topic? And what will it help your students do right now, but also later? Third question, what will this topic prevent your students from doing right now and also later? So knowing that we can't generate for, uh, an interest for somebody else, doesn't mean we don't meet them where they are. You can focus on your own curiosity for your students. For instance, you can wonder what topics or what teaching methods they seem to be most interested in. You can document your findings. When you notice their interest, how uh, do they show up? This interest? Are there commonalities between the different times when you identified interest? For instance, do they sit up? Do they look at you or look at the board? Do they raise their hands? Do they ask questions? Do they answer questions? Can they repeat what you said? We can also check whether it's our perception that they're interested or if they actually are interested. For instance, we can simply ask them a few questions, a couple of questions at the end of an exercise, at the end of a lesson, at the end of a chapter, whatever. The questions can be as simple as what interested you and why. And then you're free to do whatever you want with that information, to decide if it's relevant or not, to use it or not. And maybe you can try and renew the experience, the successful experiences, fully knowing that success, their interest, is not guaranteed. And it has nothing to do with you. Nothing's preventing you from being the curious explorer or the scientist looking for a solution. As Steve Chandler said, experiments never fail. To which we can add Nelson Mandela's quote, I never fail, I either win or learn. So to recap, we've seen that one, whether your students are interested or not, it has nothing to do with you or with your lesson or the topic or whatever. Second, Either they can't help their lack of interest, if they're lacking sleep, or they chose not to be interested. The third point is that by cultivating your own interest for what you teach and for your students, you increase the opportunities of connecting with what deeply interests them.
Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful to you. If so, please share with another teacher who might also find it useful. My goal is to help as many teachers as possible. So I really appreciate you contributing to my mission. Thank you so much. I also want to give a special thank you to my muses who inspired me to create that episode. If you also have a topic that you'd like to share with me, there are two options. First, you can contact me via email at nscoaching at outlook.fr. And the second option is for you to request your free discovery call with me by clicking on the link under this video. In 30 minutes, we'll discover what is the root cause of your particular issue and we'll create a roadmap for you to solve it, whichever way you like, so that you feel much better. All you have to do is click on the link below. Thank you so much. Take care and I'll see you soon. Bye.